Hello, and welcome to the Brave Hearts Bold Minds podcast, Growing Fine Young Men. I'm Lee Hatcher. Thanks for joining me as we explore a whole host of ideas and opportunities as we seek to help the boys of today grow into the fine young men of tomorrow. Each week, I'll be interviewing an educator from the Scots College in Sydney to find out what makes boys tick and how to equip parents of school-age boys with practical insights so their sons can be built up and their characters strengthened for wisdom and compassion. So let's ring the bell and meet our guest for this week's podcast. With me today is Ryan Smart. Ryan is Vice Principal Administration at the Scots College. His title is Boys Are Spiritual. Ryan, welcome. Thank you. Good to be with you. Great to meet you. Ryan, how do we define or recognise the spirituality of a boy? Look, it's a really interesting question. I think it's something that has not always been at the forefront of education. Really, when I think about spirituality and spirituality of a boy, it's thinking about who they really are. It's about identity. It's about character. It's about the motives and desires that they have in their heart that is motivating them and their actions and their thoughts, their vocation. It's very much about who they are. It's about who they are, how they are relating to other people, how they are orientating themselves towards the world, towards God. So that's what I think about. A view about life? Absolutely. A view about life. It's sort of worldview type questions, but it's, it's very individual as well. Yes. Anyone's spirituality is not entirely visible when we make our minds up on so much of what we can see. So it's probably not surprising if this dimension of spirituality is often ignored or neglected. Is that mm. right? I think that is right. You're right that it is invisible to an extent. I think you can always judge someone's character on their actions. And so you you do see an outworking of people's spirituality, but in a sense, you never really do know what is going on in someone's heart or or their, you know, deepest desires. So what is important though, is that that part of them does exist. Yes. Um, And And to recognise it does. it, It needs to be taken into consideration any educational program, any time you're dealing with boys and formation and development, there's that side of them that is very pertinent. Talk to me about the difference between spirituality and being religious, right? Mm. Well, spirituality, I think, is such an individualistic thing. Yes. It, it, it's, it's about yourself, your identity. Religion tends to be based in a community. It's a codified set of beliefs. You practice together. You, you know, would go to a church together. You sing hymns together. They're the religious aspects. The spirituality, I think, does come back to your own individual identity and and character. It's often a far bigger picture, actually, isn't it? I agree, yeah. Yeah. Can you give us some practical examples of how we might recognise a boy's spirituality and the kinds of things he does, Mm. the kind of person he is? I think of service as one of the really important aspects of seeing spirituality. Coming from the example of Jesus, he talks a lot about the heart. And in Mark 12, for example, talking about love for God, love for neighbours as sort of that golden commandment. So service is at the key of it, how you are serving people. I think about other things like compassion, about honesty, integrity, courage, truth. They're all aspects of someone's character where you see their spirituality. Let me hone in on truth. In an age where truth is so up for grabs, Mm. that is part of a boy's spirituality. Mm. Why is it such a big deal then? Truth is the basis of relationship and relationships are the basis of a community. So you need truth to relate to someone in a family context, in a work context, in a business context, in a school context. And truth is the basis of those things. Where you have a breakdown of truth, you lose community very quickly. What or you, you, honestly, what do you have? Well, in, in between any relationship, you and me, me if I'm the Prime Minister, the President <laughs> of the United States of this era of That's fake right. news. Yeah, well, it's sort of in, in our world at the moment, isn't it? Yes. This whole idea of fake news. Yeah. What damage does that do to community if you can't trust the people that you're working with or your leaders? Is that so, a challenging thing for a boy? Because the little white lies, very easy mm. and often expedient. Well, I think so, because you can see the sort of instant gratification type culture of, oh, well, if I don't tell the truth here, then I can get this particular thing. But absolutely, if we want to raise fine young men to lead 
our community, they need to have truth as the sort of bedmark of their character. Yes. Yeah. Ryan, is there a boy who comes to your mind mm. where all those kind of dynamics that you mentioned, service, courage, integrity, truth, mm. they've been really evident or you've seen it grow and flourish yeah. in later life? Yeah, I, I think there definitely have been lots of examples of that throughout Scott's. One boy in particular I'm thinking about actually became a Christian sort of midway through school and he went on to be a very significant leader in the school. His leadership was based on service of others, of honesty, of of courage, of compassion. He And his whole vocation actually post-school, he's gone to work in the sort of not-for-profit sector, working with charity groups because his heart's desires have been changed by Jesus and, and have motivated him towards a spirituality and service of others. And no doubt made a big difference in the lives of many. Well, as a leader, like yeah. a student leader, boys recognised that. They, they saw that there was something different there and it made sense. It, it wasn't strange. It made sense that actually this is what you should be doing and how you should be treating other people and serving. You know, year 12 isn't an entitlement. You're serving the whole school. Yeah. yeah. I have another picture of boy, tough, chiselled features <laughs> on the rugby field. Yeah, yeah. Take no prisoners. Yeah. For him, will not spirituality seem a bit wet, do you think? Well, I don't think so. I'm not knocking rugby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think rugby's great. Too um, right. And there's definitely a spiritual side, I think, to every activity. And one of the great things about a boys' school is that you can see that mm. under challenge, under pressure, working in a team, working in a community, as you do sort of in a rugby team, that's where you actually get to see someone's true motives that's and passions yeah, indeed. come out. Yes, so indeed. I would not say that rugby is not interested in spirituality or, or anything like that. I think it's, it's the whole boy. Yeah. yeah. Are there people in history who we can examine to gain a sense of what spirituality will look like? Well, there's some of the greats, aren't there, who have done great things, who have worked tirelessly in the service of other people for good rather than evil. People like Wilberforce, Mandela, Churchill, they sort of come to mind as great leaders, but leaders who were specifically serving other people in what they were working to achieve there. But I, I also think of the example of Jesus. He's the ultimate example of someone who has exhibited a deep, deep sort of spiritual side of service to others and actually sort of provided the example on how people who follow him should live their lives. None of those men you mentioned had an easy life though, when we so often mm. think that life is about being happy yeah. and being fulfilled or having power yeah. and riches. Yeah. This is not an easy road to hoe. No, it's not. And that's okay. Yes. The, the goal of life is not to be happy. Well, if not what? <laughs> well, I, I think the author of life himself has sort of defined life in such a way that you do serve other people, that you love God and you love your neighbours. And so that is the way life is meant to be lived. Even when it becomes tough. Even when it becomes Sometimes tough. Sometimes necessarily tough. Actually, Absolutely. Going that road. That's right, yeah. And that's why those other bits such as honesty and courage are, are so important. Um, you can't just separate those out. And, and that's why you can't talk about virtues such as courage and honesty and leadership without acknowledging the spiritual dimension to those things. Ryan, I always love how our podcasts are practical. So being practical here, how can we best nurture a boy's spirituality and enable it to flourish? Well, I think the first thing is acknowledgement. Yeah. So every boy has a spiritual side. Every boy is spiritual. You can't ignore that. And so you need to take that into consideration when you're planning any sort of program or activity with boys. I think as well, you need to put them in connection with strong leaders and strong community where that spirituality is going to be nurtured and challenged, where it's going to be talked about, where examples are going to be provided. I think also giving opportunities for them to experience pressure and challenge so that that character formation can happen at appropriate stages of a boy's development. Yeah. What about the things that they are taught? How influential and potentially powerful for a boy's spirituality will they be? Well, absolutely. And so explicit Christian teaching on spiritual matters, I think, is vital to a boy's journey to understanding what actually is true spirituality. Absolutely. Can I ask you this? In a world where 
so much of this kind of spiritual thought is up for grabs as mm, well. Mm. Everybody's truth is everybody's truth. Why should people be thinking that the Christian road takes a priority or is the ascendant amongst all the other voices, all the other philosophies? I think that's a really good question and, and that's the relevant question because in this day and age, there is that marketplace mentality towards religion and spirituality. Freedom of thought. There's so much out there. I sort of come back to it's not about your feelings and happiness. That's not the pursuit of life. The pursuit of life is about service of God, service of other people. So you can't do that by just thinking, well, I'm going to pick the best bits here and there. That isn't what life is about. I think it's pretty clear that God, the author of life, has created us as humans in a particular way to act in, in particular circumstances. And we need to be following that. He's, he's the best guide for us because he created life. Can I wrap up our most absorbing conversation with a quote from the 19th century American essayist, lecturer and poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said this, the gods we worship write their names on our faces. Be sure of that. And a man will worship something. That which dominates will determine his life and character. Therefore, we'll do well to be careful what we worship for what we are worshiping, we are becoming. Mm. What's the message for a boy and his parents mm. out of that. Very powerful quote. Mm. It's a great quote. Yeah. Uh, and it captures really nicely what we've been talking about here in that what we are worshipping will be what we become. And so it's not an optional thing that we can ignore. Yes. Actually, when we're thinking about the character and the, the type of boys that we want graduated out of Scots, they need to have their hearts orientated towards Jesus. That's a really important aspect of character formation. For the good of our world. For the good of our world. Ryan Smart, thank you so much indeed for a great conversation. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information about growing your boy into a fine young man, you can subscribe to receive useful articles and news from the Scots College. It's free and offered to every parent who wants the very best for their boy in their journey to manhood. In your internet search engine, enter the Scots College e-newsletter to subscribe. I'm Lee Hatcher. Hope you'll join me again next week on the Brave Hearts, Bold Minds podcast, Growing Fine Young Men. So after we've been in the kind of stratosphere of philosophical thought, <laughs> let me bring you back down to ground level. There's the bell. Ring us out. Okay. Press it. <laughs>